How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse and in this video I'll be reviewing the Matter Informed Desktop 3D Scanner. So the Matter Informed 3D Scanner launched quite some time ago after a wildly successful Kickstarter campaign, but I only recently got my hands on one to test, so why not give it a review? The scanner has a really nifty compact design and is a turntable based setup, meaning the size of objects you can scan is fairly limited, but the actual scanning process is largely automatic. The unit comes packed away neatly with a few cables, power adapter, and a calibration block. One of the most nifty things about the matter and form is the way you set it up for scanning. Simply press the top button down, fold the turntable out, and rotate the handle down to form a front leg. Then you plug the power adapter and USB in, and you're good to go. This ability to fold and pack away is really nice and sets it apart from lengthy setup times like you need, for example, with the David SLS systems. In terms of tech specs, the largest object you can scan is 25 centimeters high, by 18 centimeters in diameter due to the turntable design. You're also limited to, it to an object of three kilos or less so you don't burn out the turntable motor. The Matter and Form is a laser-based system taking slices of depth data at a time and as the platform rotates, it builds up a 3D point cloud. Accuracy resolution is always a bit vague on low-end 3D scanners, but the Matter and Form claims details as low as 0.43 millimeters can be reproduced and overall accuracy of plus or minus 0.25. I am, to be honest, a little dubious about that though. The software is super easy to use and I feel that because I came so late to the party since the Kickstarter, the whole experience has become a whole lot more polished than earlier reviews seem to have experienced. I experienced no software crashes and running it on my powerful i7 desktop versus my Surface Pro seemed to make very little difference. So I think you can probably get away with a fairly average PC to run the scanner, though wrapping your final point cloud into an STL for printing will take a lot longer. So that's all well and good, but how well does it scan? Well, let's first look at how long it takes to scan. To be honest, it takes ages. 3D scanning isn't really that fast, but the five minute claim on their website, to be honest, is a bit of a joke because that would be for the fastest possible, simplest object you could scan. Scanning Vanellope von Schweetz took probably about an hour, to be honest, although the scanner is completely self-sufficient, so you can let it just do its thing in the corner. And you can also check on the scan as it progresses because it live updates, which is actually quite cool. The conversion from point cloud to mesh went fairly well with the simple trimming tools being easy to use and intuitive, if a little basic though. However, there was a few errors that needed to be repaired in mesh mixer, but that's pretty easy to do to be honest and expected from 3D scans. The result, not too bad actually, especially for a unit under a thousand bucks. I tend to describe low end 3D scanning as getting a shape and putting a thick layer of shrink wrap over it. And you can certainly see this effect in the model. Small details become somewhat rounded over and her head seems to have become squished slightly. Having said that though, it's one of the best details I've seen from one of these desktop scanners, especially an all-in-one turntable unit. And outside of far more expensive and time-consuming units like the Next Engine 3D Scanner, it's pretty good, especially considering that the Next Engine costs five times as much as the Matter Informed Scanner. And here's what the final 3D print looks like, printed at 200 microns on the Up Mini at a fine speed. Keep in mind that a lot of detail in the figuring comes from color rather than form, so really it's not too bad. Which I guess takes us into the summary. What purpose does this scanner or any other of its class actually serve? 3D scanning is still very early days, even more so than 3D printing. So if you're looking to reverse engineering parts with a high degree of accuracy, the matter and form might not be for you. However, if you're good at creating clay or plasticine models by hand rather than 3D modeling, you could use the matter and form to 3D scan these models and use them as a blank for 3D printing down the line. So I can see the matter and form being very useful for things like puppetry or wargaming where the end product scan is perfectly suitable for what you need. Otherwise, although fun, I do personally feel that low end scanners are still a bit of a toy for most consumers. The matter and form is available for 600 bucks US direct from their store. And something also worth keeping an eye out for is their new bevel, a tiny portable scanning unit you plug into your smartphone. So I wouldn't be expecting crazy high res from this thing, but I really like the idea of a truly portable when you want 3D scanner that you can have on yourself at all times. It's a pretty interesting concept. So I backed their Kickstarter, which unfortunately is finished now, and I've got one lined up for when they ship in early 2016. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Matter Informed 3D Scanner. Do you think it's something you would find useful? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinion. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more 3D printing content, please do consider giving me a like or maybe even subscribing. It would help me out a lot. And look forward to another 3D printing 101 coming very shortly here on Makers Muse. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.